It is the most significant example of a human giving COVID to an animal yet. How the San Diego Zoo Safari Park learned that some of its gorillas now have the coronavirus. Plus, the vaccine superstation near Petco Park opens with the goal of vaccinating 5,000 healthcare workers a day. The potential for opening more superstations around the county. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. Tonight, a Chula Vista family is searching for a mother of three who was last seen four days ago. Good evening. I'm Kimberly Hunt and I'm Steve Atkinson. Her family believes she did not leave her children on their own and they are desperately looking for answers tonight. Our ABC 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty spoke with her brother in law who claims there were are many red flags surrounding her disappearance. Maya Tabalanza was last seen at her Chula Vista home Thursday night. Her brother-in-law says she vanished without a trace. Oh my God, this is like a terrible, it, it feels like a nightmare. Richard Drolier says the family knew something was wrong when she stopped answering calls. We had plans uh, to go to Big Bear this weekend and we all have a messenger group and um, she was the only one who never, who never replied and that was Thursday. So it was kind of weird. He says she would never leave her three young children, ages four, nine, and 11. And she would never miss her eldest daughter's birthday, which was Sunday. She just turned 11. And for her to miss that, it's, it's hmm. not possible. We just pray to God that she comes home safe and contacts one of us. Tabalanza works as a contract specialist for Naval Base San Diego. Chula Vista police have interviewed her husband, who is her high school sweetheart. He last saw her at their home Thursday. Detectives say the couple had marital problems, but at this point they have no leads or any indication of foul play. Jolier says the couple got into an argument the day before her disappearance. He says that this is not the first time she's uh, gone away, but my wife knows her sister really well and she knows that this is not normal. The family has set up this Facebook page waiting on pins and needles. It's overwhelming sometimes, man. It's just, sure. there's nothing else to do but just to get her, get her home. That's the number one thing. Get, find her, get her home. Vanessa Van Hefty, ABC 10 News. We've reached out to Maya's husband, but he has not yet responded. If you have any information, you are asked to call Chula Vista Police. The San Diego Zoo is making headlines around the world tonight after at least two gorillas at the safari park tested positive for coronavirus. The park made that discovery after the gorillas started to show those symptoms. Our ABC 10 News reporter Leah Pazzetti shows us how the gorillas are doing tonight and how the zoo thinks they were exposed. There are still a lot of questions right now, and as you can imagine, a lot of research still to be done. But Governor Gavin Newsom saying in a press conference today that they do expect updates to come in real time. We have two gorillas at the San Diego Zoo that now have tested positive for COVID-19. During Monday's press conference, Governor Gavin Newsom sharing what he called an interesting update. It's just an area uh, that's long been of concern, human to animal transmission, but our beloved gorillas, obviously, um, we are uh, concerned about. Two gorillas at the safari park have officially tested positive. One more is showing symptoms, but the zoo says it is possible more could have coronavirus. In a release, the zoo said it suspected they were exposed by an asymptomatic staffer who have been taking precautions and wearing PPE when around the gorillas. They also said research shows non-human primates are susceptible to COVID-19. However, this is the first known case of natural transmission. Executive Director Lisa Peterson says they do expect a full recovery. They're doing okay. They're, they're experiencing some mild symptoms and we continue to observe them, uh, but they're drinking, they're eating. There are eight gorillas in this troop at the safari park. A spokesperson tells me that they found out about the positive cases by testing the feces. However, they weren't sure exactly which gorilla belonged to the feces. So at this point, they're not sure which specific gorillas were positive, but they are assuming that all eight of those gorillas in this troop were exposed. Leah Pizzetti, ABC 10 News. Thousands of San Diego healthcare workers are one step closer to being vaccinated against COVID-19. The county's first ever vaccination super station is up and running downtown near Petco Park. As ABC 10 News reporter Rachel Bianco shows us, this could be the first of many to come. Sky 10 shows the steady stream of cars headed into a tailgate parking lot near Petco Park. 
The county's first ever vaccination superstation is set up to vaccinate up to 5,000 phase 1A healthcare workers a day. It's crazy. I didn't expect it to be this big. Sarah Peterson got in line shortly after the site opened at 7 Monday morning. I had signed up for another one, but it wasn't until like February, so I'm actually really grateful for this one. Peterson works in mental health. I work with people who are with like a major depressive disorder and I, I am hands on with patients and I have kids at home as well, so it's really important. This pain rushes, you need to let us know or hunt your horn. UC San Diego Health, the Padres, city and county work together to get the site open in just five days. UCSD staff and volunteers are giving the shots. Dr. Christopher Longhurst is one of them. We're experiencing a massive surge in our uh, hospital. Almost one in three patients in our hospital now is there for COVID. Longhurst says there is talk of setting up another site in the South Bay and possibly one in North County. It is unclear when. This is critical and, and you know, we're doing a large effort here at Petco Park, but this should show us all that it's possible and we're going to need multiple other sites like this in the county. Right now, the county is paying for the operation with the hope of getting money from the state and federal governments. Rachel Bianco, ABC 10 News. Right now, the Superstation is only available to healthcare workers. It's open from 7 to 7 every day. Appointments are available online at vaccinationsuperstationsd.com. The surge in COVID cases has been hitting the county's grocery workers hard. Our partners at KPBS report that a record number of essential workers at Ralph's, Vons, Albertsons and CVS have been infected. There were 82 confirmed cases in November. One month later, there were more than 400. And less than two weeks into the new year, there are 152 new cases. The union representing those employees believes despite the cases, the workers have been able to ensure safe working conditions for themselves. The ability for them to walk away and wash their hands, clean their check stands. Um, we, we tell members they have the right to just remove themselves from an unsafe situation, whether it's overcrowding, whether it's somebody refusing to wear a face cover, uh, making sure that they know what their rights are. The union believes that vaccines for grocery workers should be expedited. Currently, they're part of phase 1C out of the rollout plan. We are still just in phase 1A, which includes millions of people. And as more vaccines are administered, you can follow the latest coronavirus developments with the ABC 10 News app. You can find it for free in the App Store. Five days after the assault on the Capitol, House Democrats are formally introducing an article of impeachment against President Trump. Before voting on it, Speaker Nancy Pelosi has given Vice President Mike Pence until tomorrow to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove President Trump from office. If the House votes to impeach the president a second time, it would be a first in American history. And joining us now to better help understand this current attempt at impeachment is Casey Dominguez, professor of political science at the University of San Diego. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Yeah, of course, thanks for having me. We have just nine days left in President Trump's term if he is impeached a second time, the process could play out after Joe Biden is inaugurated. How does that one affect Biden's first 100 days in office and two affect Donald Trump already out of office? Uh, well, I, you know, obviously he can't be removed once he's already left office. Um, so the question would be, um, if he were convicted by the Senate, the trial, you know, will, would probably take place in the Senate after uh, after the inauguration. So if he were convicted um, by two thirds of the Senate, uh, there, are, there are certain advantages that he could lose, including um, he could be prevented from running for president again. Um, as for the, the Biden administration, uh, it'll, you know, there's a lot to do in the first hundred days. Uh, there are many appointees that the Senate has to, this is a big time for the Senate, the Senate has to confirm uh, Biden's appointees uh, and there will be legislation that the House and Senate want to move through. And uh, it will be a, it will be a, a challenge, uh, presumably, for the incoming, very closely par partisan divided uh, Senate uh, to manage all of that. Um, but that will be up to Chuck Schumer to manage all of that uh, in a timely way. And those who believe there should be another response other than impeachment are citing the effects on impeachment in the future. So looking at inciting insurrection. How might that change impeachment in the future, or does it? 
Well, it's important to remember that both impeachment and not impeaching a president both set precedents. Uh, and so there have been many instances in American history where presidents have stretched the boundaries of their powers in various ways, and they haven't been impeached for it. Um, presidents have gotten the country into military conflicts and never been impeached for that, which has led to the precedent that they can take those kinds of actions sometimes uh, based on the precedents that other presidents have set. So, you know, there's there's a question of uh, can you do a very quick impeachment without uh, a House Judiciary Committee hearing? Does that set a precedent for the future? Perhaps. Um, can uh, the other on the other side, there are questions about if you don't impeach a president for certain types of actions, what does that say to the future and to other presidents in the future who might like to take similar actions? All right, we will watch the events and we appreciate your time. We hope to have you back. Casey Dominguez with USD, thank you. Thank you very much. A judge has agreed to let San Diego District Attorney Summer Stefan take over a case from the LA District Attorney. We told you Friday how Stefan wanted control of that case because she said that LA wanted to backtrack on a previous agreement. It stems from a crime spree nearly two years ago that started with the string of robberies here in San Diego and then culminated with two murders in LA. Red Nelson was arrested for the crimes. Stefan said that she agreed to let L.A. prosecute the case because they promised to pursue a maximum life sentence without the chance for parole. Last week, Stefan said that L.A.'s district attorney decided not to do that.